Good morning, everybody. So great to see everybody, and I'm glad you're here. And hopefully uh, it won't be too long. We can all be in the same room enjoying our company. So just want to let you know that we have some great presentations, and the session is being recorded. And we have some fantastic presentations. And if you want to put your questions in the chat, and we'll look at those at the end of the presentations. So again, thanks, everybody, for being here. And uh, we'll kick it off. Back to you, Marshall. Great. Thanks, Dave. Um, everyone, welcome. As Dave said, uh, we're looking forward to having this meeting in person again um, you know, very soon. Um, first, uh, before we get started, though, um, I do want to uh, thank our generous sponsors. Uh, their generous support makes events like this possible and supports our mission to ensure that the city of Lancaster is a vibrant place for all who live, work, and visit. And um, our legacy sponsors work now. Uh, sorry, I'm. Um, That's okay. <laughs> it's, it's okay. The next one. Sorry, it worked worked in the practice session. I know, right? <laughs> we know um, who you mean, Kathleen. <laughs> well, we're uh, we're going to get started um, then. The um, um, I'm so looking forward to hearing from our speakers today. A lot of great information. Um, before we get to our member spotlights, um, I do want to say on behalf of uh, Lancaster City Alliance and the Downtown Investment District that um, happy Pride Month to everyone. Um, so everyone, please get out and um, celebrate, celebrate and observe. And, um, and, and as a reminder, um, our offices will be closed Friday um, and observation and observance and um, celebration of Juneteenth, which is on the 19th. Um, so uh, we hope that everyone um, takes a moment um, to um, also reflect on that. And, um, and we would um, really appreciate that, very important. Um, so uh, again, great lineup of speakers um, here, very excited um, to hear. Please, please, please um, use this as an open forum to ask questions. Uh, again, as Dave said, um, feel free to use the chat uh, and then there'll be time for uh, questions and, um, and comments after each uh, presentation. Um, so with that, um, I will turn it back over to Kathleen to introduce our spotlight. Kathleen. Our first spotlight, we have two today. Our first spotlight, I'm uh, really pleased to welcome Marquise Lupton, um, uh, the founder of TCP Network, The Cultured Professional. Marquise. Hello, good morning, everyone. <laughs> How's everyone doing this morning? Great. 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 Really great, good. great, great. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, um, well, I'm going to uh share, share my screen here um so that we can um get things started off uh kind of exciting. All right, so can everybody uh see the screen? Yes. Yes. Awesome. All right. Well, let's get it started. According to AAA, nationally, gas is lower this Memorial Day weekend versus last Memorial Day weekend. But less drivers are still expected to be valued at $1 million. This emergency response equipment was acquired at virtually no cost through the federal surplus property program. And with hurricane season just a month and a half away, training efforts will be revving up here. This trailblazing piece of technology could potentially change the way you hear and feel incoming calls. In a couple years, you can go from hearing this ring to feeling this vibrate. According to Chef Beggs, the best way to beef up your 4th of July burger is to add some filling. Whether it's salsa or blue cheese, the best way to beef up your burger is to think outside the box for great results inside the bun. This grant will reward the Asbury United Methodist Church with $30,000 over a three-year time span, granting this church the opportunity to launch community outreach programs. Now, if you take a look behind me, you can see the home that was affected. All right, everyone, uh, let me stop this real quick. All right, so everyone, uh, my name is Marquis Lupton. I am uh, the founder uh, and, and CEO of the TCP Network. Um, TCP is, is an acronym uh, that stands for the Culture Professional. And, um, and what we do, we, we cover um, the voices of the disenfranchised. Uh, we, we cover 
on the stories that fall in between the cracks. Uh, we also uh, represent a, a, a underrepresented group in, in media. Uh, for, for example, um, when was the last time you saw a news reporter um, in a wheelchair? You know, just uh, just just those those simple things of representation. Uh, when we talk about media, uh, when we talk about our our news, uh, that's what we aim to do uh, is to represent those voices that really don't have um, a large platform, really don't have uh, that megaphone, um, and unfortunately, uh, really don't have that interest um, to get those stories covered. Uh, so I'm going to. Uh, play another video uh, for you all to show you exactly uh, why why I started TCP. Cambridge. 19-year-old Glenn Wilson and 20-year-old Brandon Sampson, both from Cambridge, have been arrested and charged with the alleged murder of 21-year-old LeBrian Jones. They both were charged with first-degree murder, armed robbery, and related charges. <laughs> and now they're being held in the Dorchester County Detention Center without bond. Police say the community played a big role in the arrests. We received some informant information uh, and also assistance from citizens uh, in the area who were able to provide police with information that uh, led us to Wilson and Sampson. And Mayor Victoria Jackson Stanley released a statement about the two arrests. I extend my heartfelt sympathy to Mr. Jones's family and want them to be assured that due diligence will be given in this case. All citizens of Cambridge are commended for their involvement to help bring closure to this tragedy. We are only successful as a community when we work together as was shown in this investigation. Cambridge Police Department members are also to be commended for their excellent work in the result of the apprehension of the suspects. At this time, police are still pursuing more suspects. And with two arrests already made, this community can start to mend the hole that LeBrian's murder has left. In Cambridge, Marquis Slepton, WMDT 47 News. All right, so the reason the reason um, why I showed that um, is, is because a bunch of times, uh, more, more often uh, than I like uh, during my news career, um, I would be, I would go out um, and, and aim to cover a, a great, great, great human interest piece. Oh. That was another video, sorry. Um, <laughs> Uh, but um, but yeah, uh, so there would be a bunch of times uh, when when I would be on a, a human interest piece, uh, what we call those, unfortunately, in the industry um, are fluff pieces. Um, I, I would be on a human interest piece just to uh, be pulled off to cover um, another shooting, another fire, another police involved incident. Um, and and as as a black man, you know, uh, that that gets kind of tiresome. Um, because there's so many uh, other great stories out there uh, that can be covered and that should be covered. And that was one of the reasons why I got into the news industry as a news reporter. Um, and, and just over the years, I just uh, saw myself um, covering uh, more, more and more black and brown people in a negative way. Um, in the industry, we have this thing called if it bleeds, it leads. Uh, so that, that, that means that the most egregious stories, the most uh, outrageous stories, they get the most coverage. Uh, so naturally, uh, me, me wanting to do this uh, community service type thing and, and cover more, more positive stories, it just was not going to happen with that model in place. Um, so, so after about um, uh, 10 years as a news reporter, um, I decided to start TCP Network. Again, TCP stands for The Cultured Professional. And, and again, uh, what we do is we cover those stories that fall in between the cracks. Uh, we have a morning show that is literally airing um, right now. Uh, and, and we cover those stories that fall in between the cracks, those on stories that WGAL, Fox 43, uh, ABC 27, uh, that they just don't have the time to cover. In the news industry, uh, it has now become um, uh, kind of a kind of a feat uh, to get your to get all of your stories out. One reporter is 
is uh, is dedicated a seven story, seven story day. So that means that you have to go out and get seven stories throughout the day. Uh, and you can't spend more than 20 to 30 minutes on that story. So that just shows you how you're not really getting uh, the meat and potatoes of your stories when you're listening and watching your local news. Uh, one of the things that we like to do with TCP is, is take our time um, and, and not be in this assembly line of news and information, but rather uh, give you stuff when the details uh, roll out instead of being the first one. Um, another reason why I started TCP was because a bunch of times when I would be in the newsroom sitting next to uh, the show producer, they would they would go through page after page after page of mug shots and say, you know, oh, well, this guy doesn't look scary. Uh, this lie doesn't look scary. This guy doesn't look scary. Um, sorry, running over a little bit. Um, um, so um, so what I wanted to do uh, was was to make news a little bit more positive, um, make news um, digestible, not have people have news exhaustion, not look at news and say, oh my goodness, um, this, is, this is so tiresome. Oh my goodness, my neighborhood is on fire. I don't wanna watch this anymore. Uh, we want to deliver the news that you can use. We want to um, tell you about the new Delhi. We wanna tell you about the new organization. We, 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 we want to tell you uh, about the great things that are coming to your city uh, that can help you. Um, our thing is news uh, that you news that you can use um, news with a shimmy. Uh, we also like to um, we, we also like to entertain and inform as well. Uh, so that's all I have. Uh, sorry for running a little over. Thank you, Marquis. Kathleen, you're muted. Thank you, Marquis. We'll be putting a link to TCP, the Culture of Professionals website in the minutes that we send out. Right. Thank you, Marquis. Uh, and now our second um, um, and very appropriate uh, member spotlight for this Pride Month is Karen Foley, the Executive Director of the Lancaster LGBTQ Plus Coalition. Um, and I have a presentation for Karen that I actually will share. <laughs> Thank you, Kathleen. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> I am Karen Foley, she, they pronouns. Um, thank you so much for having us. Happy Pride Month. Um, we, so just a brief overview if folks don't know who we are. We are, um, we are the sort of queer LGBTQ plus uh, community center plus we do advocacy work and working with um, <clears throat> different things like housing, um, health equity. And right now we basically started our first stakeholder meeting was in February 9th, 2019. Um, so many of you here were at our launch party on November 12th of that year. Um, and we had like, I don't know, 400 people on um, November 12th on a freezing rainy day. So that was wonderful. Um, and then we've had tons of support. And then we launched our huge VIP sponsor party at the Ware Center and it was a big success. And then we got smacked with the pandemic. So then, <laughs> then we left, all of our sponsors were gone. So you can go ahead and speed through Jeremy to the next one. There we go. Okay, so here's brief overview of our mission. Um, pretty basic, we are here for, so that all intersections of our community, every single intersection feels welcome, supported and celebrated. Next slide, please. So like I said, brief overview of our history. Um, thank you <laughs> to so many of the people that are here that have supported us, our SCORE mentors are here, Bob and Larry, um, and so many folks from the City Alliance and Alex, all these folks, AJ, all of you here have, you know, most of you were at the launch party too. Extraordinary Give has been wonderful for us too. Um, we, you know, had $35,000 $35, in our first year with over 450 individual donors. And then the next year in the pandemic made even more. So that's insane. Uh, so then we immediately switched into uh, virtual programming once the pandemic hit. Um, the really nice thing about being sort of a small size is that we were able to act quickly. Um, so 
Uh, we have several groups that are going on. We have a group for trans and non-binary folks. Our youth group is still going on. Um, RPG is sort of the role-playing game group that tends to be a great group for, you know, younger folks who maybe have some, you know, maybe social anxiety. So that's basically like the Dungeons and Dragons and they can have a character, um, craft groups, things like that. Oh, I'm teaching, still teaching trans queer yoga at noon at Musser Park. So come on down. Next slide, please. So thank you to the folks for, um, you know, at, with Lancaster Cares, we were given two rounds of emergency funds that we were able to help over 50 individuals in our community through direct service. We were able to offer $250 um, mini grants for folks to use um, however they needed. And that tended to be, uh, the majority was housing and rental, so rental assistance. So um but again the ability to give people direct service with very minimal questions asked um was a, you know the report back was that it was really really wonderful for, for folks they felt you know they were taken care of treated with dignity um and you know 250 dollars oftentimes is what keeps people from being homeless yeah so next slide please so like i said uh, most of the funds went to housing um in the first round and then um, you can go to the next slide too. The next round was um, <clears throat> was actually even more. So we had 75% of it went toward housing funds and utility bills. So knowing this and quite frankly, the first meeting I had with like Eva Dombrowski five years, six years ago from at Claire House was that I knew because our community is, you know, the, the our community in terms of homelessness, there are 40% of homeless youth identifies LGBT. Um, so immediately I knew we would need to start some kind of an affirming housing program because there really aren't many places that we feel confident that we could send someone to and they would be entirely treated with respect and dignity from beginning to end. So next slide, please. So we are very lucky to have the wonderful sponsorship of Steinman uh, Foundation. And also we just got uh, funding from PNC. So thank you very much. We started our HEART program. Um, our first pilot was February 1st, 2021. Six month uh, pilot program. We housed four people and um, that's a six month program. You can go ahead, go to the next slide. So again, these are some of the statistics. <clears throat> 40%, like I said, unhoused youth identifies LGBT. Um, and then over two times, the LGBT people are often twice as likely to experience homelessness in their lifetime. Next slide, please. As I covered, 70%, most of it, most of the funds went toward housing and rental assistance. Go ahead, next slide. I just have to say, I made like a 30-minute presentation. I didn't know, so I'm like speeding through this. So hold on. Okay, so <clears throat> let's go ahead. We can skip through this. Statistics are like, uh, the, the reality is, is that our, <clears throat> even though every issue <clears throat> is an LGBT issue, um, our intersections are really the most vulnerable, right? So we're looking at like, you know, like transgender, you know, women of color, right? Um, like I said, we got um, a PNC grant to fund our social enrichment program to help folks, you know, so we are looking at a, a program that keeps people from being homeless. So we have folks that are living in unaffirming environments um, that are sheltering in unaffirming environments can't necessarily just hop over to, you know, another housing agency. So we were able to <clears throat> house folks and, you know, basically help them through you know, get, you know, finances, help them get employment. And right now <clears throat> with, our, with our program, we have a 100% efficacy rate. Um, next slide, please. So everyone has uh, employment. Everyone is uh, connected to mental health care. Uh, we have our, everyone has uh, their permanent placement now. We have <clears throat> our next location in the Southwest. Oh, <clears throat> I'm sorry, Sammy is here, our new housing, uh, Hey, Sammy, where are you? You can introduce yourself real quick. If you I'm right here. Hello, everybody. I'm Sammy Rosa. Nice to meet you. <laughs> yes. And what's your title? I'm the new housing advocate for the new house that we got on the Southwest. Yeah. All right. So then, <laughs> thank you. So uh, right now, again, I'm putting another shout out. We are still looking for a director of programming. Um, ideally, somebody with significant experience, uh, and then we will uh, expand our program to do um, outreach uh, in terms of like seeking out people. 
in person. So next slide, please. Like I said, 100% efficacy rate. Next slide. So, you know, some of the testimonials here, and you can read that, the, you know, really every single one of the people that I had there, some of them were from our youth group, some were, um, you know, interns, things like that, um, and had never been in a place where they were fully affirmed and living in a place. And I'll tell you, the moment I walked in and I, like first time I walked into the house and I saw one of our people that were living there, like they were in this silk robe and like hot pants making like sweet potatoes. And it was just like, <laughs> it was just like the most beautiful thing that I've ever seen. So um, next slide, please. <clears throat> and I am very, very excited to announce that uh, with our partnership with uh, Dr. Sheree Livingston from Patients Are Waiting and UPMC, um, my life's work as a therapist has been to connect providers, work the queer underground to get my people seen and get the kind of dignified healthcare they need. Uh, so working with Dr. Livingston, we are going to launch Langster's first LGBTQ plus health consortium. So next slide. Basically, this will connect providers, identify who our um, proficient LGBT providers are, work with the, you know, existing clinics and hospitals to make sure that from front end to back end that every single place where our community will go they will people will have an idea of how to use the correct pronouns how to identify somebody you know that is you know transgender and has a different name legally um, and basically there are there's so little research for our community it's it's actually kind of terrifying that there's so little research so we are looking at um, incentivizing residents to give them scholarships so that they will um, choose to now, you know, take these electives. It's still an elective to study LGBTQ plus health. So we will work to incentivize residents, but also work with, you know, educators to, in, to make sure that they put this into the curriculum, that it's not, it's a non-conditional part of your education. Um, and then to sort of do skills sharing and connection so that you know, the sort of the insular nature of hospitals, we have, you know, UPMC, Dr. Livingston, who's the head of the OBGYN, doesn't even know Dr. Lake at comprehensive care, right? So the, these two people are like leaders in LGBT healthcare, and they don't even know each other. <laughs> and they're like miles away. So that's a huge issue. So we're looking at an organization as a consortium, not connected to any hospital that will be able to then connect providers with it in between hospitals. And then we will look to really effectively coordinate care for our community. Next slide, please. Uh, Karen, uh, yeah. we are uh, uh, over the oh, five yeah. minutes. Can, so we can, can kind of go to the, the end real quick. I just want to give a quick shout out. We're doing, like I said, we're doing our vaccination clinics. Um, I didn't say that. We are doing vaccination <laughs> clinics. And go back. Go on back. One more. Go back. <laughs> Uh, one more. So here we go. So we just did our um, our Vogue vaccination visibility um, event. Uh, we had Niambi Stanley, who's um, a local ballroom legend who lives around the corner from me in the Southwest. Um, and it was a wonderful success and a great joy. We, um, we are offering another one on the 27th at McCaskey High School from eight to five. This is in partnership with Patients Are Waiting. And um, that's gonna be our salsa and merengue event. You can go to the next slide. Um, that will have inclusive affirming salsa lessons and um, salsa from three to five, uh, DG Ecliptic and soul food truck and all these wonderful things. So again, thank you so much for having us. Happy Pride Month. You can go to the next slide. Um, again, like I said, all those sponsors who might be here who were like, boop, 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 I'm gonna I'm going to go somewhere because now it's a pandemic. We're still here and we've been active. So come on back. We'll welcome you back. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you to the Community Foundation, Steinman, PNC, Arconic, all the other local businesses. I have to say it's been incredible. Local businesses have stepped up for us. And so in the pandemic, it's been really, really a beautiful experience. So thank you all. Thank you, Karen. Uh, Kathleen, before before we move on, um, uh, Marquise and Karen, I want to thank uh, both of you again. I do want to, uh, and Karen, that was a ton of helpful um, information. Um, and I think um, uh, 
folks probably uh, want a chance to absor absorb it. So you don't mind if we do share your presentation, right? Yeah, please do. Great, great. I'm, imagine right. me being extra. Yeah, I know. What'd you, what'd, what'd you say? I said, imagine me being extra. <laughs> And then the, uh, I do want to offer folks the opportunity. I mean, if there's one or two questions um, to do that now, Kathleen, don't kill me. Um, but no, of course not. <laughs> All right. If not, again, please feel free to, to use the chat. And if you think of some, we can get them to Karen or, or Marquis. So um, everyone just uh, please give that some thought. Um, OK, with that, Kathleen, I'll turn it over to you again. Uh, I'd like to introduce um, uh, our new uh, uh, health service outreach officer for the city of Lancaster, Carly Gessler, and she's going to tell you a little bit about her role. Carly? Hi, everyone. Is everyone can hear me okay? Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, so I'm really excited to be here. I've been trying to get to some different meetings that are obviously virtual, but going on within different groups just to kind of say hi and kind of put some faces to names and kind of start to meet some different people in the city. Um, so I recently started this position about two months ago. So I'm, I'm new to this role, but I am the health outreach officer for the city of Lancaster. Um, and this is a new position as well. Um, so I work with um, Penn Medicine, Lancaster General Health, and then I also work with the city of Lancaster um, and Kim Whistler, the health officer, Millsy, um, director of neighborhood engagements, um, and partnered with them as well. So mm -hmm. essentially, I was brought on board to help the city of Lancaster prevent and then also respond to the COVID-19 pandemic, um, you know, just after hearing, you know, Karen and the things that have come up during the pandemic with her group with housing and knowing that, you know, each group kind of has some different things going on as a result of the pandemic, um, you know, kind of trying to address some of the things within the city that are going on and kind of help help alleviate some of the pain that has happened. Um, so I'll, I'll be in this role for about a year and that'll kind of look at, so, we'll look at some different programs and initiatives and kind of move forward slowly by slowly. But obviously the first thing that we're working to address is vaccine access and vaccine education. Um, so I do feel like there are a bunch of different organizations and um, medical organizations that are offering vaccines. And I really do feel like the access in the city is good. There are a lot of different opportunities for people. So that is um, very positive. The one thing that we're also working to address is any education that needs to be taken place. Um, so we know that people might still have questions, which is completely okay. Um, and we wanna make sure that the right information is getting out there and that people are able to have open conversations with medical providers and that they're able to get their um, questions answered. Um, so those are kind of some things that we'll be starting to roll out, you know, starting as early as next week um, with some education sessions and opportunity for community members to ask their questions to professionals. Um, so I'm hoping that my, I'll make sure my contact information is put in the minutes of this meeting. That way, you know, everyone here kind of has their own network, whether it's work or their neighborhood or whatever that might look like. Um, but if you happen to notice a need specifically at this time related to vaccines, access or education, certainly reach out and hopefully I can be of assistance to that. Um, and one thing I did want to share, so next week for people in the city is Mayor's Neighborhood Week. I'm not sure if everyone's aware of that, um, but that takes place next week and we will have um, education opportunities for people in neighborhoods every night that week. Um, next week to answer questions and uh, talk with doctors and just hopefully have some open conversations of just the pandemic, COVID-19, the vaccine, and just answer anything that people have questions about. Um, so I am just going to verbally tell you the event, um, but hopefully maybe that can be included in the minutes as well. That way it's written down for you. Um, but the event will be 4 to 6 p.m. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of next week. And each night will be in a different location. Um, and it's not just going to be my group. There are going to be different groups from City Hall, Public Works that will be at the event to just talk with community members and um, I'm sure provide resources and things like that. So Monday the 21st will be at Musser Park. 
Tuesday the 22nd will be at Culleton Park. Wednesday the 23rd will be at Milburn Park. And then Thursday the 24th will be at Buchanan Park. Um, so even if you don't have questions, concerns, you know, we'd still love for you to come out and just say hi and maybe meet you in person. Um, but certainly one of our first events that we're going to be offering opportunities to people for people to ask questions to medical providers um, to, again, try to get more people comfortable and to, again, get more vaccines in people as well. Um, so that's really all I have. I just want to come on and say hi. So I'm really thankful that I got to be here today. Um, and kind of all the things that I went over will be in the minutes for you. If you have questions, feel free to reach out. Thank you so much, Carly. Does anyone have any questions for Carly? And um, if everyone can take note that Annie Weeks, our, the director of the Lancaster City Office of Promotion, um, added a, a link in the chat for everyone to the Mayor's Neighborhood Week. Also, we will be promoting that event on Lancaster City Alliance social media. I'll make it a point to highlight the events that Carly just referenced. Um, and so now, without further ado, um, I can't believe I just said that. Um, <laughs> we can come to our special presentation um, uh, for this merchant meeting a forecast for the future that will be delivered by Kevin Malloy, the executive director of the Lancaster County Convention Center Authority. And I'm uh, really happy to introduce the brand new general manager of the Lancaster Marriott at Penn Square and the Lancaster County Convention Center, Josh Novak. Uh, gentlemen. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> So a year ago, we we're in the middle of a pandemic and we're all worrying about, uh, we heard homelessness and all those other challenges we had in our community. And we'd like to think we're starting to work on a comeback. Uh, I don't know how many of you are aware, but the uh, Convention Center Authority is uh, an organization to help our community's economy. Uh, do you wanna click, please? Slide, one more. Thank you. The mission of the convention center is to provide an inviting, well-managed, well-maintained Lancaster County Convention Center facility for our guests. And that's what we have Josh and his team to do. But the outcome is for the convention center to contribute to the economic development of Lancaster City and Lancaster County. And you all are part of the Lancaster City piece, which is a very important part of it all. I'm, I'm really uh, excited to be here today as we start to talk about a survey we're going to uh, send to you at the end of today's presentation where you get a chance to provide us with some feedback and that feedback can be very helpful in our planning of events or marketing for events that will help uh, going forward in the years uh, to come. And we'll do another one of these in, uh, in a couple of years. So right now uh, we've engaged con uh, convention, uh, HBS to provide an economic study of the convention center uh, for 2018, 19, and 20. And we do understand that economic impact will talk about 2020 and what the pandemic did to our community. We need to benchmark beforehand as well so we can understand what our goals and objectives will be to come out of this in this comeback. It's really important to us. It's important to you folks that we have the right events in the convention center that will provide uh, success in your um, whatever it is you are merchants of, whether you're restaurants, your uh, retail, uh, or the, the like in downtown. Uh, so this study is an opportunity to, re to review our impact in types of activities and understanding their val value to you all. That's why we really encourage you all to take that survey. It should be in your email box at the end of today's uh, presentation. Uh, and with that, I'm gonna leave it to Josh to take it from there. Yes, well, good morning. Uh, Kathleen, next slide, please. Uh, just, just to let you know, I know we're all usually bogged down with lots of different surveys and all the things that we do, but uh, we really designed this to be very quick. There's only 10 questions. It should just take a couple minutes to fill out. Please encourage uh, other folks to do so who aren't on uh, this presentation or on the call here today. So 
Uh, very simple. We'll go through real quickly, Kathleen. But number one would be, do you own, operate, or manage a business in down Lang downtown Lancaster? Question two is really six choices of what type of business. So we categorize them uh, that you're involved with. Question three uh, really is what year did the business open? So important for us to kind of understand, have you been here long? Have you been here recently? Uh, question four really uh, in, is the 10 events. So this was an interesting one though. So these are 10 specific events that we uh, outlined by name that really talks about what type of impact did it have on your business? So these are events that we've had historically um, throughout the year, different times of the year. Um, so we're really looking to see um, five indicating it'd be a high impact event um, to your business and one would be a lower one. So question five. Um, really, uh, please consider an average week of operation of your business. And then when there are events being taken place at the Lancaster County Convention Center, um, by percentage wise, how much does your business um, increase? So there's a couple different options there. Uh, for six, you know, for the businesses that opened after um, the Convention Center opened, which was be 2009, um, the question is, would you have opened your business in the absence uh, of the development of the Convention Center? Um, activity from the convention center is essential to the profitability of my business. So there's obviously one to 10. You know, one interesting clarification I do want to make because this is the integrated facility of the hotel and convention center. A lot of people sometimes say, oh, I get business from the Marriott or I get business from the convention center. Um, and it'd be very difficult to say which of those things are the drivers because again, we are an integrated facility. So it's important to remember that guests who are staying at the hotel are um, more than like almost 50% of the time attending an event that is being in space of the hotel and convention center. So important to make that distinction. Um, the lack of activity at the convention center um, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, did it material impact your business? Um, you know, as you know, our last real convention was March 12th of 2020. Um, and we've gone through a really difficult time here in the meetings and convention business. Um, we had some activity in the first half of 21, which we'll talk to a little bit, but we'll be welcoming in um, our first real multi-day convention starting on Sunday night, which is the National Holstein Convention. So long time coming, but we'll talk a little bit about the activity we were able to attract in the first portion of 21. Um, describe your thoughts, the impact the convention has, uh, convention center has on your business. And then question 10, a little bit different is, describe your thoughts on the impact of the convention center on downtown Lancaster as a whole. So those are the, the 10 questions of the survey. As Kevin mentioned, they should be in your uh, inbox at the conclusion of this presentation. So um, please take a moment and fill it out. It is very, very valuable information as we continue to evolve the composition of events that we're attracting uh, to the convention center and to downtown Lancaster. I do wanna point out this um, survey is in partnership with the Alliance. So this is part of a, a community wide. Uh, this information is not just gonna be used by the convention center, it'll be available to you all. Uh, you know, as I had mentioned earlier, as we entered um, 2021, uh, we were not expecting to have much convention center activity in the first six months. We've had 14 different iterations of meeting restrictions, social distancing, mask wearing, not mask wearing. So uh, it was very difficult for meeting planners to have any level of confidence that at the time of their event in early 21, uh, could it be held and could it be effective? Because in a lot of cases, it's six, to, six months to a year of planning before an event. Um, so uh, we have the outlook uh, of the rest of 21, which is July through December, but I'm happy to say that we actually had 20 events in the convention center using our largest space, Freedom Hall, uh, which is about 46,000 square feet. And as you have seen, as it, the information comes out from the Alliance, a lot of that was in um, sporting events, dance competitions. We had a bodybuilding event. Um, we really pivoted quickly to try to figure out what events were still being held um, and really targeted that with a, with a really strict prospecting effort. Uh, so we were able to attract probably 20 events that we did not expect to have uh, in the first half of this year. For the rest of the year, 
Um, it's exciting that we have 28 contracted events in Freedom Hall for the rest of the year, uh, six tentative events, which means we're looking to uh, close on those contracts. So again, we're, we're still expecting about 70,000 people to come through just Freedom Hall um, for the second half of the year. So when we tally that up with what we've done in the first half, we're almost about halfway to the amount of attendance we would normally have in a stabilized year. So that is really encouraging news when we certainly weren't expecting that given the uncertainty of the, the pandemic on our business. So your next question is, you know, how, how is the rebound and resiliency look for 2022 as we, uh, we move out of um, all of the restrictions that have impacted the hotel and convention center business? And it's nice to see that we actually have 38 contracted events in Freedom Hall um, currently on the books. Um, representing about 121 days of utilization uh, in the convention center and attendance of over 160,000 people. 17 of those are still looking to be uh, finalized over the next six months. Uh, so that represents an additional 54 days. So typically we would have 200 and 220,000 people through the convention centers, Freedom Hall in any given year. Right now our anticipated attendance with what we just have uh, and what we haven't booked not including what we will continue to book, is about 195,000 people. So the outlook for 22, as far as utilization and foot traffic here in Lancaster, uh, is pretty optimistic at this point. This was just a couple of, of the events that we're going to be welcoming back in 22. I mean, a lot of these folks have been with us a long time. Uh, and obviously because of 20, and even in some cases, 21, uh, they weren't able to hold their events. So you can see just the broad range of uh, events that we attract here to the convention center from big game hunters to miniature gamers to Comic-Con, Zenkai-Con, which you all, we all know is a, is a fun event here in, in Lancaster to our annual uh, Chamber of Commerce dinner, which attracts over 2,000 2, people. So uh, excited to see and welcome back some old friends. So, when we talk about data that the survey is going to be helping uh, tweak and what types of events we want to have uh, so Josh and his team can go after to try to bring to the convention center. I do want to share a couple, a little data here, which is really interesting. When we, uh, if you look at these five different uh, sections of lost business report, we kind of can say, how have we taken that information and bettered it? So an example is, let's say we look at, um, the size of meeting space available. And that's right in the middle of the screen. And if you looked at it, it had uh, been one of those things where people had looked, or meeting planners had looked to um, the, the, the convention center and they may have not been the right size for us to market and try to bring to this building. And they said, hey, you know, you're really to, to this, to that. And we've been able to hone in our marketing efforts to decrease that as being a reason why someone wouldn't choose our convention center. So the marketing efforts really have been honed in to the specific customers who want to be in this region, this size community, and this type of venue. And that allows them to use their resources wisely. That's a really good example. Another example is uh, if you look at parking. Look at how at the beginning when we started uh, the convention center uh, in the early days or in the mid 2000 uh, teens, we, that was a concern for a lot of our customers. That has uh, virtually gone away and not been a reason why people have wanted to come here. Then you look at guest room avail uh, availability. That was a big concern. Well, then you add the Holiday Inn downtown and the Marriott extended another 115 rooms. That problem has decreased quite a bit. So if we have the data, we're able to then tweak what we're doing for business and kind of be able to use that and use our resources properly to bring in more events that meet your criteria that you fill out in that survey. So we're looking forward to the details of the survey, and we hope to have that out uh, either late November or in December for you all to see. Next slide. Uh, I do want to thank for being here today, and that would be the Lancaster City Alliance, you the merchants, the city of Lancaster, Lancaster County, and all that it attended today, as well as HVS who is gonna be uh, driving that survey. I know Ann is the one who's gonna send it out, but HVS will be the one who collects all the data and provides it in a report to us all so we can uh, better uh, use that data to improve our businesses. Thank you very much all. Thank you both so much. Um, I, I know 
uh, from talking to uh, merchants and small businesses uh, how much um, uh, a convention or an event at uh, the convention center and the Marriott um, impacts the local small business community and how much they look forward to getting the news in our convention center updates. Does anyone have a question for um, Josh or Kevin? We will put um, uh, this, uh, the survey will be going out immediately after this meeting. Um, I hope that you all will take a few moments to um, uh, complete the survey. Uh, it's only through uh, your responses and the data uh, that they can make the decisions that they need to, to benefit the entire small business community. We believe that's a very short survey with the 10 questions J uh, Josh outlined. You should be done in under 10 minutes. Thank you, Kevin. Kathleen, could I just say congratulations to Josh on his promotion? <laughs> Thank you, Sandy. Uh, Marshall, may I continue with the member intermarketing report? You may. I'm happy to say I don't have to screen share anymore. <laughs> Um, we are working on some uh, wonderful special presentations for the remainder of the year. Uh, in July, we will have Cindy McCormick, the Deputy Director of Public Works for the City of Lancaster, to give us an update on Yule Plaza. Um, in August, Annie Weeks uh, and team from Loop uh, will be discussing um, uh, ways for the small business community to engage um, and um, re-energize First Friday. Um, September will be a really brilliant uh, marketing panel uh, uh, on marketing in a post-COVID world um, with some of the leading um, digital marketing experts uh, throughout Lancaster. Um, in June, we uh, delivered welcome packets to this new, these new businesses, Norvu, uh, the Nepalese restaurant on Christian Street, Baldi's Blends, um, a spice, a retail spice shop on New Street, and uh, we have one waiting for the stakeout. Um, uh, in the location of the former Lancaster cheesesteaks on West King Street. Um, I guess the biggest announcement from our uh, um, MIM committee of June is that uh, we discussed when these market meetings will return to an in-person format. And we did that based on the survey that we sent out in all of our um, uh, list track email messages to promote this meeting. Um, the results of those responses were 90.9% .9 yes. Uh, they wanted to um, resume meetings in person, 9.9% uh, .9 no. Um, uh, they also wanted um, them to be uh, uh, maskless, but social distanced. Mm. Um, the MIM committee uh, voted and it was unanimous that we will begin uh, in-person meetings um, at the July merchant meeting on Wednesday, July 21st. Uh, the location of that meeting is to be determined, but uh, rest assured, we will get that information out to you as soon as possible. The time will be the same, 8.30 to um, 9.45. Um, and we are all looking forward to being mm. able to see one another and interact and communicate with one another safely in person. Kathleen, will there be a Zoom option? Uh, we possibly, 
if, if we can do that. If not, um, uh, Marquise has been kind enough, Marquise Lupton has been kind enough uh, to offer to assist us in recording uh, uh, that meeting and, and having the court recording available for those who are not able to attend. Uh, and then uh, we will be gauging the interest in that recording after we post it on YouTube to see, and, and we'll do that for a few months, to see um, uh, you know, what the response is, how many people actually sign on and, and watch it to see if we will carry on with that as a practice moving forward. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Uh, but we are, we are also looking into seeing um, how to simultaneously Zoom um, uh, and, and literally technically how to do that. Um, another uh, big thing that we are working on is the fact that it's Lancaster City Indie Retail Week next month from July 16th through Sunday, July, Saturday, July 24th. Um, we're, I'm hoping that all of you will help support this shop small event uh, to support the merchants and retailers in the city of Lancaster and celebrate the fact um, that we have such a vibrant and diverse retail community throughout the city, not just the downtown. Um, we're going to have a really marvelous um, uh, tote bag uh, for sale this year. Um, I'm going to just go out on a limb. I'll, well, look. This is our new um, tote bag. It's about the size of a, um, a canvas beach bag, and it has shoulders that you can, uh, it has um, straps that you can uh, uh, wear over your shoulder. Uh, so it's a nice roomy bag that you can take out for a full day of shopping or a trip to market. Uh, those will be on sale. For merchants who want to, uh, at a wholesale price soon, for merchants who want to um, have them in their store uh, for that event, perhaps to, to give us promotions for a large sale um, or to sell, um, and then they will be available for um, the consumer uh, to either be, um, Annie, can they be picked up at the visitor center that week? Absolutely. Yeah. Yay. Okay. <laughs> and um, mm -hmm. and Tyler Gr Grabeel of Swedish Candy is going to handle shipping them to anyone who uh, wants them delivered. Um, our biggest um, uh, challenge is right now is getting retailers to participate. If you um, have a favorite uh, small business and um, uh, you happen to stop by or you are a merchant and are on this call, um, if you have not signed up, I just dropped the link for the participation form that's on the Visit Lancaster City uh, website. Thank you, Annie, uh, for taking care of that. Um, uh, or you can share that link with um, a colleague who might be a store near you. Um, and this is open to uh, uh, retailers, boutiques, galleries, um, both uh, uh, brick and mortar and online. Kathleen, what does it mean to participate? To participate, um, you need to offer some sort of a special. Um, it does not have to be a discount. It can be um, that you uh, host an event or um, uh, you offer um, a um, donation to a, uh, a local nonprofit. Um, I, we have a list of, we'll put that in the minutes. We have a, a list of promotions that cost zero dollars um, um, that can help inspire 
retail, look, retailers who might be on very tight budgets, um, uh, but would like to take part in Lancaster City Indie Retail Week. And then you simply add either your address or your um, the website URL for your for e-commerce e for your business. Um, and if you do have a brick and mortar, we do ask you to add your hours. And then you get a link on the uh, Indie Retail Week website. Uh, and we give you at least three shout outs on social media. We are spending um, hundreds of dollars in uh, Facebook ads, not boosted posts, but ads. We're going to have uh, a full page spread. It might be a two page spread in LNP the Sunday paper the week before, and uh, the Wednesday digital paper. Um, and it will include a map that shows all participants. We also have an ad coming out in Susquehanna style. Um, um, thank you to all of our sponsors. Uh, and that includes Willow Valley Communities. Thank you, Chris Ballantyne, uh, who's present right now for your generous support and Annie Weeks, the Lancaster City Office of Promotion for your uh, a founding sponsor and a generous funding sponsor as well. <clears throat> Happy to be part, thank you. <laughs> and I do believe that's, that's all I have. All right, thanks Kathleen. You're welcome. Um, well, it's 930. Um, we do have uh, a few minutes. Um, if anyone has any questions for any of the presenters today or um, anything they want to bring to the table. And if not, um, we'll see everyone in person next month. Yeah. Hey, Marsha, I just wanted to mention, uh, we do have, so Mayor's Neighborhood Week, I put the link in the chat. Uh, so Mayor's Neighborhood Week leads up to Celebrate Lancaster, uh, which also the public dining spots will be open in the city as well. Uh, Celebrate Lancaster, there's a full schedule of events. So I will put that in the chat as well. There are nine local bands or local food trucks, but just in general, we are really encouraging people to celebrate Lancaster however you'd like to celebrate. So, you know, support your local business, come down, shop, uh, you know, see the Barnstormer game. That's one of the best seats in the house for uh, the fireworks. And uh, we're running a promotion with them. First 100 guests will receive uh, $5 in downtown dollars. Um, so just a full schedule of events. We're really excited. It's looking like a good day. So thank you. We love that downtown dollars uh, event. We'll be promoting that on Lancaster City Alliance social media as well. Yes. Okay, great. Yeah, there's two fireworks locations and band throughout the, and uh, music throughout the city, but that is one of the locations that we're very excited about. Anyone else? All right. Well, since we didn't do it at the beginning, I do feel that I should um, acknowledge our legacy sponsors um, that made this possible, and that's um, Penn Medicine, Lancaster General Health, um, Franklin and Marshall College, Fulton Bank the Steinman Foundation and the High Real Estate Group. So um, for any representatives um, of those uh, companies and organizations that are here, thank you very much. And um, uh, again, thank you to our speakers uh, for taking the time to join us today. Um, a lot of great information. And uh, thank you all for um, sharing your morning with us. So everyone um, enjoy this beautiful, beautiful day. And um, we'll see you next month. Thanks everyone. Bye everyone. Thank you.